G'day guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a Morgan's Stonerwood Pacific Ale. This is a, a beautiful style, I've done this one before. Uh, I did a video probably a year, half a year ago, something like that and it came out brilliant. So I'm gonna do it again, because I really like the flavor of it. Uh, it comes with the a master malt wheat, in the extract kit of course, and also the Pacific Pale Ale that Morgan's do. So they're both Morgan's, there's a whole Morgan's kit that we got, I got from the uh, Firkin Cellars in Morwell. Uh, they also have two 12 grams of, uh, two 12 gram tea bags, I call them, uh, of Galaxy, and a 12 gram of Cascade. So, so you're looking at around about 36 grams of um, hops going in at about day four. So when you when the fermenter stops fermenting a little bit, uh, gets to a point where it's settled down and the crowls has disappeared and everything else, you chuck these in and off they go. They start just adding flavour and aroma, nothing more. Uh, they, they're also using American ale yeast, which is, um, you, I used this one before and it really came out well, so I reckon they're pretty cool. Uh, this is a good one. If you guys really want to do a nice brew, a quick brew and an easy brew, this is the one to do, do it with. It's really nice and it's well worth having a look at. Alright, what I'm going to start off with, any extract. We have a, a kit with instructions. The instructions actually say how to brew it so, and they're pretty good. Uh, first thing I did was I cleaned my fermentosaurus out and then uh, sanitizer. I've got sanitizer sitting in it right now, keeping it clean. Uh, I'll end up tipping that sanitizer out and then pouring my extract in with just tap water. Um, I was going to filter my water, my tap water, but um, it takes too long. And I, last time I didn't do it, and it came out quite good, so I'm happy with that anyway. So I'm not going to do it. Um, this one here tells you how to brew. It just says to, in, in here, mixing, you pour two liters of hot water into the fermenter, but I can't do that because the fermenter is. Uh, it can't handle the hot water, so I'm going to have to do it in a pot, then pour it in later when it's cooled down. So I'll do that now. So I've got my big old boiler pot. Uh, just giving it a quick whoa! <laughs> oh, really? Just uh, giving it a big old rinse out with um, a bit of sanitizer, just to make sure it is clean before I go putting uh, fresh water in here. The fresh water will be a problem. Uh, sorry, the pot would be a problem if it had bacteria already sitting in it. So putting the f sanitizer in and around it makes sure that the bacteria doesn't get into the water later when I'm actually doing my brew. So that's done. So the sanitizer I'm using is, it, it's, it won't hurt you in small doses. So you can actually leave a little bit in there and it won't harm the beer, it'll harm the brew or anything like that. So, it's gonna be... so what we do now is, uh, Actually, first thing I should do is actually put my two malt in hot water in a sink and soak it while I'm doing all this because the hot water will soften it up and thin it out so it can actually be more reliable and I can pour it into my pot. So, in they go. I don't know if anybody's ever done this before, but I have queried online people and talked to a few people about this. Uh, in the past, I've boiled water on the stove and uh, poured it into my pot, and it's a bit time consuming. They say you can use it from your tap nowadays, the water is pure, it's pretty clean. And it is already boiled in your boiler outside in, in, in the hot water service. So the water from the tap is just as good as boiling it or taking it from a boiled kettle. So the good thing about that is I can just pour it straight from the tap put my two liters of hot water from a tap into my pot and uh, and go from there. Put my extract in, mix it up, make it really nice and go from there. So we're making about 23 liters today. Um, I'm gonna put that into my fermentosaurus. The uh, process of fermenting, that's, uh, that's two liters there, that's four of these which are 500 mil. So I got two liters of hot water in my pot I probably did it a bit early, but it doesn't matter. Um, it is a warm day, so the extract will probably be a little bit soft anyway, so I'll give it a little bit more time, and I'll get back and we'll pour it in, and we'll go from there. So, I'm about to 
opened both my extracts. They've uh, warmed up nicely. Use a lefty can opener so I can get it all done easily. It's going to take a while. Okay, so my extracts are open. Pop this in and we'll start extracting the extracting. <laughs> Uh, we'll start feeding the extract into the pot. Okay, I'll go with the um, I'll go with the, the what do you call it? The um, master malt wheat for now. We'll pour that in there, and just take note: we don't boil anything, so it's really quite cool. This, and I just realised I didn't sanitise my thing. Uh, well. There's the, uh, the wheat extract. I'll fill that up with hot water and swish it around and give myself a bit of a, um, get it, get every bit of precious oh, sugar out of it that I can. I need 50 hands here, I need to be an octopus. That's that one. Relax here. I'll just pour some of my pale ale uh, malt extract, which will um, darken and clean. Oh, I just got a bit of paper in here, didn't I? That's not a good thing. Okay. Apparently nothing's working out really well for me today. So this is smelling awesome. I don't know if you guys have done much brewing. But geez, the, the smells you get from brewing is absolutely beautiful. You can't just can't just go past it. I mean, everything's like molasses or honey. It's very nice to taste as well. Um, you could put this in meals and probably cook with it too. I reckon I can see a few areas where I could use this. Anyway, I'll do the same thing with this. I pop some water in there to. Uh, Rinse it out so we've got as much of the sugar out as we can. And uh, see what it is while that's waiting. So I put two litres of hot water in here, or you know, hot tap water, which is extremely hot. Um, that'll dissolve the extra. And then I'll pour what I've got here, probably about a litre and a half in, in the can. So that'll make three and a half litres in the, the pot here. So what I'll do with this water is I'll, I'll, I'll dilute it to a, I'll put a bit more cold water in there and then pour it out into my fermentosaurus, which can only take about 30, I don't know. Can't take high temperatures anymore. So that's starting to dissolve nicely now. So it's all... My fermentosaurus and we'll fill her up. Okay, I'm about to put the extract into my fermentosaurus. It is cooled enough that the fermentosaurus can handle it. Um, the fermentosaurus can't handle hot temperatures or boiled water, but it can handle uh, warm water or semi-hot, you know, uh, so it's fine. So I'm gonna pour it out of this pot, which I've done before. I'm, I'll put a towel underneath my fermentosaurus. This is a hard part. Normally I would use a siphon, but I haven't got one, I broke it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour it in and uh, as you can see in the fermenter, there's actually bubbles. And the bubbles are just the sanitizer I put in, which won't harm the beer at all. Uh, and we'll go from there. So here we go, wish me luck. <clears throat> Will I spill it? Will I spill it? Oh, I spilled a little bit. Not too bad though, not too shabby. It's pouring all right. Just take it easy. Go slow. There's no rush. Slowly. That's why I put a towel underneath so I do spill some. 
it's uh, at least on the towel. Okay, that's all our extract poured into my fermentosaurus. Ready to go for topping up with just fresh cold water from the tap. I'll speed this up guys, no stress. So as you can see, I finished. I've topped up the fermenter to 23 litres. I'm now wanting to put the yeast in. Now, I've got to check that the water temperature is below 27 degrees. That's pitching, that's uh, maximum pitching temperature. So if it's below 27 degrees, I'm right, right to pitch this. If it's above 27 degrees, I'm gonna to have to leave it until it cools down to below 27 degrees Celsius. So as you can imagine, it should be below, I've used all cold water, it should be below 27 degrees Celsius, which it is. It's uh, 26 degrees Celsius. So we're right to pitch our yeast. The other thing I need to show you guys is, this is just foam from stirring, uh, adding the oxygen as you're pouring water. It's very highly oxygenated. When you pitch your yeast, they do recommend that you stir your yeast in uh, for at least a minute just to get the aeration through it, get the yeast right through the whole wort, uh, and then wait for it to ferment. So here we go. So I'm about to pitch my American ale yeast, which is what we're gonna use with this one. I've got some sanitizer in a cap bottle, which is um, probably good practice, just to give this a quick squirt, like all the other tools and things you're gonna use. Just give the, uh, the yeast a bit of a quick squirt. I just didn't want to do it over there. So when you cut it, also the scissors you're gonna use to cut it as well. So I'll give my scissors a bit of a squirt as well, just so that we can be sure that there's no desanitization, there's no uh, bacteria. And of course, this has just been on the bench, so I'll just squirt that one again. So we're right to go. So we'll open the packet up now and we'll pour in. There's our yeast. You can see that. How good does that look? It is quite some nice smelling too. It's got a, like a bread smell, of course. <laughs> it's good. So we'll pour that in. We won't spread it around, we just pour it in the centre. That's all we need to do. This is what I've been learning. A lot of people try and spread it around, but I'm going to stir it anyway, so we shall do that. So now I'll get my stirring stick. Now it's been out, so I'll give that a spray of sanitizer as well. And it's got to go right in the fermenter, so I've got to go right over the whole whole thing just to make sure it is clean or sanitised. And I'll get in there and give this a big old stir. While I'm stirring, I'm adding a lot of oxygen into the wort as well. So I've heard that the new Fermentosaurus has a wider opening. Now I'd love to get my hands on one of those. The, uh, the opening in this is just a nuisance. You can't get your arm in there to clean it. You can't do anything. It's very hard to clean these little, little buggers, but they are a great little fermenter. Got a lot of air going through that at the moment, so all right. This is a the grandfather I got with the grain uh, stirring stick I got from the grandfather, so it's awesome. Mm, very nice. Okay, that'll do me. It's probably been half a minute, but it's stirred in nicely. It's got enough oxygenation, and everything's flying around nicely. So we're next. We must put on our lid. First thing we do is we've got the rubber seal. I've actually put. Uh, food grade grease on each seal just so that everything is uh, basically lubricated so you can get it off later. It, these things can tend to be very hard to get off so we spray that with, also with um, sanitizer just so no bacteria or anything that might have been around might be on it. Pop the lid over the top, spray that as well just be doubly sure and we've got our ring that goes around the side to lock it in, spray that it's got a all clean, screw it on, just firm, not super tight, just firm. Now we have a airlock, yes so I had to buy a new one, I broke the other one so this is brand spanking new. So I've already rinsed it, um, so all we do is just pour in 
sanitizer. I know this is a broken one, but that's all right. Pour in sanitizer in the outside chamber. And what that does is stops, allows air, ah, uh, sorry, allows CO2 to go up through the unit, out the top, and it won't allow air to go back into the fermenter. So it keeps the brew safe. So guys, I hope you enjoy watching this. Uh, here's our fermenter all ready to go. All I'm gonna do now is sit it there for four days, uh, wait for it to stop fermenting, uh, sorry, settle down, it's fermenting. And then I'm going to uh, put the tea bags in, or the, uh, oh, yeah, I'll call them tea bags, with the, the hops at, at day four to give it that aroma and flavor. So yeah, stick with me. Uh, once I'm done, once I'm done with this, I will do another taste test to see if it comes out the same as the one I did before this, and we'll compare it. Thanks for watching. See you again. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, say hello. I like to talk to you people. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.